Today on BRS TV Investigates, hold your hats, because today we break down the Aqua Illumination Hydra 64 performance in ways you've never seen before and set the bar for light testing going forward. When we're done here today, you'll not only know how to effectively use this LED on your own tank, but by the end, you'll know exactly why you would set one up this way to begin with. Hi, I'm Randy with this Friday's BRS TV Investigates, where we put popular reefing gear, theories, and methods to the test by experimenting on our own tanks so you don't have to experiment on yours. And in today's experiment, we're using the Aqua Illumination Hydra 64 to show off our new approach to light testing, where we provide you with data-backed recommendations for mounting heights, light spacing, and usable spectrum settings to arm you with reliable information on setting up this light for your own tank. In order to do that, we're going to answer the four most common and arguably the most important questions every reefer has after buying a new light, such as how high should I mount them? How many do I need and how should I space them properly? What spectrum does this light have to offer? And probably the most important question, after I've got the right mounting height, light spacing, and idea of spectrum, what settings should I use for my tank type? Using the answers to those questions, we're gonna produce actual spacing and setting recommendations for both LPS and SPS tanks in our 60 gallon cube and 120 gallon four foot tank that you can use to dial in these lights on your own similar setup at home. So with that, let's dive right into the Hydra 64, starting with a test we developed for optimal mounting height, where we strike a balance between light spilling out of the tank, light efficiency, and even lighting distribution. Getting right to it, after extensive testing, we believe that mounting these Hydra 64 lights at 12 inches off the water surface provides the best performance in this two foot by two foot cube. And if you have different size and shape tank, you can use the data we're about to share and adjust it to meet your specific needs. To test the light spread and mounting height, we mounted a single Hydra 64 at six inches off the water and took a full grid of PAR measurements at the top of the tank, then raised the light by one inch, took PAR readings again, and then repeated that process all the way up to 15 inches. What we're looking for is the best spread possible, meaning a reduced center hotspot and increased PAR on the outer edges while minimizing the amount of light spilled into the room or loss of efficiency. To be more specific, if the light loses more than 15% of average PAR, or if we start to see diminishing gains in the spread on the outer edges of the tank, then it's mounted too high. And using a balance of both of those parameters, we'll choose an optimal mounting height in this two square foot area, which is a fairly common coverage for LED modules. As you can see at six inches with all the channels at 100%, there is a super intense hotspot in the center, over a thousand par and an outer ring average of 107. And although there is minimal light spillage at this height, the lack of even distribution makes this mounting height undesirable in most real world applications. With a total par average across all 36 points at 335 as a starting point, let's see what happens as we raise the light up inch by inch, where again, we're we're looking for diminishing returns in the outer ring or a reduction in overall average par of 15% or less, in this case, 285. When we raise the light to seven inches off the water, the outer edges gain 20 par to 127, but the overall total par average remains at 335 or no loss. Moving up to eight inches, the outer edges gain 46 par to 153 and just a 3% loss in par with an overall average of 325. At nine inches, the outer edges gain 65 par to 172, but at a loss of 5% to 317. 10 inches gained 76 par to 183 with an 8% loss in overall par to 307. Continuing up to 11 inches, there's a gain of 88 par in the outer ring to an average of 195, but now we've lost 10% average to 300. At a mounting height of 12 inches, we see the outer edges at 204 par for a gain of 97 and a total average of 291 or a 13% reduction. At the next step up to 13 inches, we surpass the 15% threshold with the total average testing at 280 par or a 16% loss. And looking at it closer, there was a minimal amount of par gained in the outer edges to 208. 
So with that, we stopped the test and called 12 inches the winner. And when you compare the starting six inch mounting height to our optimal height of 12 inches, it's plain to see how one is far more desirable than the other, especially when you look at the 90% difference between the center and outer ring at six inches versus only a 58% difference when mounted at 12 inches. It's pretty clear to us that 12 inches shows the optimal performance between distribution and efficiency. And wouldn't you know it, 12 inches is about the max height of the Aqua Illumination HMS single mount and the multi-light mount kits, which makes achieving this pretty easy to do. But what if you need more than one Hydra 64 for your setup? Well, the next obvious question is how many do we need and how do we properly space multiple Hydra 64s? We've got the answer to that in our next test where we put two and three fixtures over our four foot 120 gallon system. And by the end of our testing, we share the most direct data back setting recommendations we've ever compiled for any single lighting fixture. To test spacing multiple lights on a longer tank, we're gonna take a look at two different tank types with predominantly LPS that typically have lower light requirements, as well as SPS dominant systems that have both higher light requirements as well as also benefits from additional light sources and reduced shadowing. We're starting with those reefers with goals of having primarily LPS and softies or lower light demand corals, where we find two modules mounted horizontally at our suggested 12 inches to be the right number for a tank like our 120 gallon four foot system. But the big question is, how do you space them? In order to find that optimal spacing, our goal is to have the par average on the size of the tank no less than 75% of the center average, and we will move the lights further apart one inch at a time until we find that sweet spot. With a starting point of the tank divided equally into thirds and the lights spaced 16 inches on center from the left and right edges, we see an average par of 434 in the center intersection of lights and a combined average on the left and right edges at 207, which puts the sides of the tank at 48% of the center and short of our 75% goal. Moving the lights out further to 15 inches from the left and right edges, the center par tested at 392, while the outer edges came in at 229, or just 58% and still too close together. At 14 inches, we see a center par average of 349 with an outer edge average of 251, making them 72% or super close to our goal. If we move the lights out each by one more inch to 13 inches, the center par drops to 309 with the outer left and right edges averaging 271. So within 88% of each other and over our 75% goal, making 14 inch spacing the winner of this test. So again, if we're installing two light modules horizontally on our four foot tank for LPS and softy corals, placing them a little further apart with the center of each light at 14 inches from the left and 14 inches from the right sides of the tank, will actually yield you more even coverage and usable par throughout the entire tank. But what about reefers who have goals of covering the same four foot tank for SPS corals, where even coverage and reducing shadows through proper light spacing is more of a concern? Let's find out. For light spacing using three lights on a four foot tank, we followed a similar approach to the last test where we mounted them at our 12 inch height sweet spot and then placed them evenly across the tank. Only this time we chose to orient them perpendicular to the tank for the additional benefit of front to back coverage given that these Hydra 64 fixtures utilize four individual pucks in a straight line rectangular shape. Starting our space testing for three lamps, we've placed each one evenly across the tank where the center fixture will always remain centered at 24 inches in the middle of the tank, while the outer left and right fixture will be centered starting at 12 inches from the left and right sides, and then move each module one inch outward until again, we find a point where the outer left and right combined par average is as close to 75% of the center par average as possible. Looking at the initial data from the lights mounted at 12, 24, and 12 inches on center, 
we find an average par of 560 in the middle, while the outer edges combined average is only 324 par for a difference of 58%. And already we can see how the additional light sources make even distribution easier. I think we can improve on that even further with proper spacing to reduce the hot spots. So let's see what happens as we move the left and right Hydro 64s out even further. After adjusting the outer Hydro 64s by one inch each to 11 inches away from the left and right edges, the two hot spots reduce the par in the center to an average of 517, while the outer edges increase to 346 or 67% so still not spaced far enough apart. Up next is a spacing of 10 inches by 24 inches by 10 inches on center for our three modules. And the center par average is now reduced to 479 with the outer edges at 359 or exactly on our 75% goal and where we stop the test meaning that we've achieved what we believe to be the optimal spacing for three Hydro 64s on our four foot 120 gallon tank, where the reduced hot spot in the center and increased par on the outer edges give us the most usable par across the entire tank. Okay, so now that we've got the keys to proper mounting height and proper spacing for multiple lights, there's only two questions left to answer on our list, and that is, what spectrum range does the Hydro 64 offer and how can we combine our data for height, spacing and spectrum to create real world settings for tanks like our two foot cube or four foot reef, whether you're looking for that LPS and softy tank type or a tank dominated by SPS. Those answers are coming up next. To get an idea of the spectrum ranges that the Hydro 64 has to offer, we're going to approach spectrum in a few ways. First, we'll get an idea of the total spectrum offering with all channels at 100%, then find out what each individual spectrum and channels are controllable by showing each channel spectrum individually. After we've seen those spectrum options, we'll run our dynamic spectrum blending test by setting the lights to our own BRS custom program, and then look at how well the Hydro 64 blends each individual light source at the bottom of our test tank with surface agitation. Getting right to the spectrum analysis for the Hydro 64, we see that with all channels at 100%, there's a pretty wide representation across all of the major nanometer ranges. When we place the Hydro 64 spectrum over one of the historical gold standards of reef tank lighting, the ATI Blue Plus T5 bulb, we see that although it doesn't hit as wide of a band in that 420 to 500 range, it does provide a pretty solid representation in those ranges. Moving on to each of the seven channels isolated and set to 100%, first is the UV channel with a solid peak in that 400 nanometer range, followed by violet at 410, royal spanning the 430 to 460 nanometer range, and standard blue in the 460 to 500. Green comes in between 500 and 540, a peak in the red channel around 650, and cool white that provides the widest band spanning the mid 400s out to the 700s, giving the Hydro 64 a wide array of adjustable spectrum ranges to dial in. And in just a moment, we'll share our BRS recommended spectrum settings that we would use for this light and how we got there. Up next for spectrum testing is our dynamic spectrum blending test and how well the Hydro 64 blends each individual spectrum channel. In order to test this one, we set the fixture to our custom BRS spectrum, then took 10 measurements under our 60 gallon cube while a power head created turbulent flow on the water surface. What we're looking for here are major shifts in the spectrum band as the surface agitation in the tank breaks up the individual LED channels with the idea that the smaller the changes in spectrum, the more evenly blended the light source will be. With that, as we cycle through the 10 measurements, we see moderate fluctuations in the spectrum around that 400 to 410, as well as in that 470 range. But beyond that, there really isn't much of a drastic change across the entire spectrum offering. I would say that this isn't the best blending that we've tested, but again, also not the worst, but the moderate fluctuations may be visually identifiable in the tank. So normally at this point, before we get into sharing the settings that we would use for SPS and LPS softy tanks for our 60 and 120 gallon tank sizes, we would normally share the manufacturer's recommended spectrum settings for how they recommend using their lights in a real world reef application. However, in this case, the Hydro 64, there are no recommended settings. 
So going forward in this and in future light testing, when we encounter similar situations, we'll do our best to create our own custom settings, mostly based on scaling up the controllable blue channels for PAR and energy for the corals, then use the available white channels to make the tank look more visually appealing while adding in some red and green sparingly. With that in mind, we followed this process to develop our own custom settings for the Hydro 64 and what we would use for two different tank types in our 60 and 120 gallon tanks, which we're about to share with you next. All right, so now that we have a deep understanding of how this Hydro 64 performs in terms of spread, distribution, height spacing, spectrum offering, and spectrum blending, let's put that information to work and share our recommended settings on using these lights, starting with a lower light demand LPS softy tank in tanks similar to a 60 gallon cube or a 120 gallon four foot reef. After we explore settings for these types of systems, we'll circle back and give the same recommendation for those looking to use Hydro 64s on a full-blown SPS dominant reef. Starting with our BRS recommended settings for tanks similar to our 60 gallon cube for those lower light demand corals with a single light mounted at our ideal height of 12 inches, we targeted a spectrum range with proven results for coral health and growth, coupled with a pleasant look to our eye that we would actually use on our own tanks and then tune that spectrum intensity until we found a PAR average throughout the entire tank within that 75 to 150 PAR range that these types of corals have been known to thrive in. When all was said and done, we landed on settings of the UV, violet, royal blue, and blue channels all set to 40%, green at 6%, and red at 9%, while cool white we set to 15%. With those settings, we tested PAR in the tank at 6, 12, and 18 inches under the water surface, and at the top 6 inches, we found 21 of the 36 or 58% of testing points within our sweet spot range par of 75 to 150. At 12 inches in the middle of the tank, that number raises to 30 out of 36 points or 83% within our target range. And at 18 inches near the bottom, 72% of the points reach our goal with 26 out of 36 ranging between 75 and 150 par. That means from the top of the tank down to the bottom, 71% of the entire tank hits that par range that those lower light demand corals like LPS and softies have been shown to thrive in. Up next, we're sharing our findings and recommendations for our four foot tank, where again, we're placing two lights at 12 inches off the water surface and using our optimal spacing data of two Hydro 64s mounted horizontally and centered at 14 inches each from left and right edges, we tested the PAR output of the same LED channel settings that we just used for the cube tank for this configuration and found that they also produced PAR from top to bottom in this four foot tank in that same sweet spot range of 75 to 150. So let's take a look at what those numbers look like. Looking at the top of the tank in six inches under the water surface, we find a pretty low 18 out of 66 or 28% of testing points within that target range of 75 to 150. However, there are 12 or more points that fall within 10 par of that target, so we're really splitting hairs here. With that, the understanding is that we can reasonably expect to see higher par in the top of the tank in order to hit that target par range throughout the middle and bottom of the tank, where most reefers typically choose to mount a majority of their corals anyway. So that said, the numbers for the next two levels demonstrate exactly that. In the middle 12 inches of the tank, the performance is exponentially better with 55 out of 66 points hitting our par goal for a total of 83%. And in the bottom 18 inches of the tank, 61 out of 66 points or 92% also hit that target par goal. That means that 68% of the entire tank, top to bottom, is optimized for predominantly LPS and softy lower light corals. And if we add in those 12 points for that we're within 10 par from our range in the top level, that number raises to 73%. We aren't done yet though. The next set of recommendations really hits home for me personally because I'm a fanatic about SPS and I'm very much in favor of someone telling me how high, what spacing, what intensity, and what spectrum to set my lights to so that I don't have to blindly flip switches till I figure it out on my own. 
With that on our 60 gallon cube tank, again, we've mounted our Hydro 64 at 12 inches off the water surface and then set the LED channels to our custom BRS spectrum. However, this time we're cranking up the intensity in order to achieve our PAR goal of 200 to 350 throughout as much of the tank as possible. When we tested, we found those settings to be UV, violet, royal blue, and blue set to 130%, green and red at 20%, and cool white at 50%. With those settings and testing PAR at again 6, 12, and 18 inches underwater, we found at 6 inches in the top portion of the tank, 16 out of 36 points hit our goal range, or 44%. Again, with the understanding that we're aiming for our 200 to 350 range from the top to bottom, which means there will be some hotter spots near the upper third of the tank. Moving down to 12 inches, there are 32 out of 36 points at our goal for a total of 89%, while at 18 inches near the bottom of the tank, we maintain 78% of points, still within 200 to 350. So that means throughout 70% of this entire 60 gallon cube with a single Hydro 64, no matter where you place your SPS corals, the vast majority of them will be within par ranges proven to produce solid results. Let's move over to our 120 gallon four foot tank where we've mounted three lights at 12 inches above the water and oriented them perpendicular to the tank for max coverage from front to back. As we found in our space testing, we installed the Hydro 64s with one directly in the center of the tank at 24 inches and the outer two LED modules spaced at 10 inches from the far left and right edges. In order to account for using multiple lights where there is higher par in the tank where the lights intersect, we chose the following channel settings to match our desired spectrum and still reach our goal of 200 to 350 in as much of the tank as possible. That means for lighting our SPS dominant 4 foot 120 gallon tank, we set the individual LED channels to UV, violet, royal blue and blue at 78%, green and red at 12%, and cool white at 30%. Looking at what those settings produce at six inches below the water in the top portion of the tank, we see 28 out of 66 points or 42% of the data points at or within our 200 to 350 goal. And much like our LPS settings on a four foot tank, there's several points that fall just slightly outside those ranges. So again, we're probably splitting hairs here. The performance is even better as we move down to 12 inches deep in the tank, where now we see 53 out of 66 points within our target for a total of 80%, while near the bottom of the tank in 18 inches, 92% of the data points, or 61 out of 66, hit that target par goal. As for the entire tank as a whole, with these settings on the Hydro 64s and a tank this size, we can achieve optimal par for SPS dominant systems throughout 72% of the tank from top to bottom. I'm pretty confident that with the tools and data we've tested today using these lights, if you chose the Hydro 64 for your tank, you've now got the tools to get you in the ballpark and set them up for success. However, that doesn't account for every tank size out there and differences in aquascape also plays a role. So best practice when dialing your Hydro 64s for your tank, verify with a PAR meter to know for certain you've got this lighting thing done right. In all honesty, as much of an investment as we're putting into high performance lights like these, I can't stress enough how checking them with a PAR meter to ensure optimal performance is a crucial step that I would never skip again when setting up new lights. Although the cost of picking up a brand new PAR meter may not be the ideal choice, the very low cost of renting one like these is absolutely justifiable given the overall investment in a successful tank. This is something that we cover extensively in all of our light testing videos like this one in this playlist over here. And if you wanna find out if your light is set to optimal performance, you can rent a PAR meter right over here.